Okay, I want to finish up our math with vectors. And last but not least, but the vectors are highly important. You'll see where we'll use vectors throughout the entire length of the program, particularly when we get into uh, circuits, transformer connections, and so on. Vector shows magnitude and direction. In other words, if I would draw a vector I can assign a specific value to that vector. It could be in feet, in inches, in amps, in volts, uh, whatever the case. This would represent a specific magnitude for that vector. Now the arrow, this is the tail and this is the head. That arrow represents direction. Now, when you're working with forces, in more than one direction, you see, the resultant forces can be calculated out in one of two different ways. Now, the forces have to be applied to a particular point. Let's, let's say that I've got a point here, and I'm going to represent this vector as being a magnitude of, say, 100 pounds. A lot of times you hear somebody, they'll turn around and say, well, I've got a 100-pound force in that direction, or I've got a mule pulling in the, in the easterly direction, so you see. And then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to have another vector that would maybe be, uh, maybe be in this particular direction. And let's say that that's 25 pounds force. And uh, what, what, what we want to do also is establish direction uh, if if I if I represent a graphic direction by those vectors we would be looking at it like we would a map in other words the top up here would be north and this would be east this would be south and that would be west you see and uh, I'd look at it like I had a hundred pounds in the easterly direction and I've got 25 pounds in the north northeast direction, you see. Now I can, I can solve that and come up with a total force and come up with the angle that, that, that my uh, object would move in, you see. In other words, I can add together those vectors. Anytime vectors go in the same direction, they'll be added. If they're opposing vectors, they'll be subtracted. The resultant would be your solution. We, we, we can show the resultant in one of two ways. Now, if I apply the vectors, both tails, on the point that we're applying that force, I could use what we call the parallelogram method to come up with a resultant force. Now, a parallelogram is a geometric figure whose sides are equal in length and parallel. The opposite sides are in equal length and parallel. So I could make a parallelogram out of this, out of those two vectors, and come up with the resultant force that I would have. Now, understand that I could be using graph paper here, and on my graph paper I could assign maybe so much distance for so many uh, pounds of force. And uh, you, there again, you're going to have to know your fractions. Uh, I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, if, if I draw a parallelogram here, I'm going to have a vector here that would be equal length and the in the same angle, you see, same, in other words, parallel. It'll be parallel and equal length. So I would have a vector that would come across here like that, that would uh, be parallel and equal length, you see, to, to this vector. Let's just call this V1, and we'll call this V2. Now, here we've got another vector over here now that, that, that has to fit in here. We'll put that up here like this. And uh, looks like it's kind of halfway close. Now, the resultant 
In other words, my answer for those two vectors added together would be from the point we start to the point that we end up. My answer now, I could, I could use a ruler. Say, say if I turn around on graph paper, and you'll be doing that in your exercise. If I on graph paper, if I turn around and I plot that all out, and I have so many, uh, maybe one-eighth of an inch represent, uh, say, uh, 10 pounds, or whatever the case might be, you see? What I, what I would do in a situation like this, I would take the, the 10 pounds into my 100 pounds to find out how many one-eighths I've got. Now here we're using fractions again. Now if I take 10 in there, you see, 10 pounds goes in there 10 times, so I've got 10 eighths. I take uh, 10 in there, I've got 10 eighths. Eight goes in there once, I've got two eighths left. That would give me one then, and I reduce, I take two into both sides, I would have one and one fourth inch vector. In other words, the actual length of this vector would be one and one fourth inches long. That's kind of a small vector, isn't it? Okay. Now, I would do the same thing up here. I would uh, calculate this all out, draw it all out. Now, what I have to do is come back. I have to come back the other way. And uh, in this case, what I would do is is to take, to find my pounds here, to find my pounds, what I would do is actually measure that length of that vector, and then divide that by one eighth, you see, using our fractions now, uh, uh, division of, of fractions now, I would measure the actual length, divide it by one eighth, for every time that goes into that, I will have 10 pounds. So the answer I get here, I would have to multiply times 10. Then that would be my resultant uh, force in pounds. Now, if I had a protractor, I could measure this angle right here and find out at what angle it would be. When it comes to forces, like I say, we want to use geographic direction. There's another reference that we want to use, and that would be electrical degrees. When it comes to electrical degrees, we'll always refer to this as zero degrees out here. Then the angles go in the counterclockwise direction all the way around back up to zero or 360 degrees again. So up here would be, at, at north, we'd be talking about 90 degrees. West would be 180 degrees, south would be 270 degrees, and back on up to zero or 360. So it could be electrical degrees or geographic direction uh, as to, say, the positioning of our vectors. Okay? Now I just showed you the parallelogram method of, of uh, vector addition and subtraction. There's another method called the triangle method. The triangular method connects your vectors up from head to tail and so on. If I, uh, if I have a vector now, and we'll say we have a vector in the east direction, and it could represent so many pounds, I can, to that, add another vector, you see, in, in, uh, in another direction and have its value in pounds. I can keep on, from wherever I leave off, I can keep on adding on or subtracting my vectors. Now this would have a subtractive effect to it. In other words, I'm coming back again. I could put another vector right here. This resultant force is the, from the point I start out to where I end up. In other words, this would be my resultant or the solution to all of those vectors. Uh, added together. Now let's go to your assignment sheet in block 3, unit 10 on vectors. I think the first one on assignment sheet 2 is, is self-explanatory. 
But uh, on assignment sheet uh, two, number two, let's take that one. Now it says add the following vectors to find the resultant vector by the parallelogram method. It goes on from point N in the middle of your graph paper. Draw vector one in the westerly direction, which represents 120 pounds. Okay, here's our point in the middle of our paper. To find out the actual length, now we've got quarter inch squares and so on there, to find the actual length, what you would do is, is take your 120 pounds, divide it by 20. goes in there six times, so you have six fourths, reduce it on down. So you're going to have a vector that's going to be an inch and a half long in the westerly direction. So we'll draw a vector, and of course I won't be able to draw it to scale, so I'll just say that our vector goes out here, and that'll be an inch and one half long, okay? Now, it says also from point N, draw a vector number two, which uh, represents another 120 pounds force at 120 degrees in the clockwise direction. So. What we're going to do is rotate from there to 120 degrees. And uh, that's going to roughly be, I'm going to just draw it out here, it's going to look something like this. And here would be our 120 degrees. Okay, now this would be uh, uh, vector number one, and this would be vector number two. Both of them be the same length, both 120 degrees apart. Okay. Uh, now, find the vector resultant by the parallelogram method, then draw the vector resultant from point N. Okay. Now, what we would do now by the parallelogram method, what we would do is make a parallelogram out of this, the resultant force would be this vector right here. Okay. Then we would go through and measure that all out. It says what's the value of the resultant. You'd turn around and you'd check that all out. Now what you want to do there is measure it with a ruler and, uh, and then Divide that by one quarter. For every time the quarter goes, a uh, quarter inch goes into that vector, you have 20 pounds. So then you'd multiply that times 20 pounds. That would give you the pounds force that you would have here. Now that pounds force should be. Uh, you work this on out, you'll find out that that should be equal to also 120, 20 pounds. Then it says draw vector number three equal and opposite direction to the resultant vector. So what I would do is draw a vector which would be equal and opposite this one, which would go down here in that particular direction. Thing. Now that of course would have to be this vector number three here would have to also be the same value as that one to be opposing and so on. Uh, you'll see when we get into three-phase systems, this is kind of a hint towards three-phase systems. Uh, you'll see that our, th our three-phase systems, the voltages are all 120 degrees apart. Uh, if I had three forces like this all in uh, 120 degrees apart from one another, I could take this vector out of here, you see, and that diagram would hold that configuration. In other words, if I'm pulling in all three directions equally on that force, this will hold its position right there. You wouldn't have to uh, have anything hold it in that particular spot, you see. So that's the object in this. A lot of the diagrams that you work on are, you'll see eventually when we get into three-phase systems, we're going to use it the same way, and the application will be similar. One of the reasons for studying vectors is so that you can better understand three-phase systems. Then we'll take them from there and uh, apply it to transformer connections. Now during this 
section on electrical math, I've tried to cover the areas that you may have a particular interest in or concern or problems with. I want you to take math very seriously because you're going to be applying this math throughout the entire four years of the program. If you understand your math, you know it well, you'll find that the following years will be that much easier for you.